live from Echo Network Studios here in Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Brett Henson, and I'm Scott Zambelli. And it's great to be back live with you guys. We missed y'all last week, so I'm definitely uh, thinking what's going on. Uh, gotta check some levels real quick as we're getting going. I'm not hearing anything. Are we good? I'm not sure. Mine is though. Okay, let me check my Try check my hotel. But uh, Scott, how you doing, man? Doing well. Um, hold on. Are you hearing now? Okay. I can hear you now. You good, Scott? <laughs> yeah, turn the volume down just a little bit. Down five. Sorry about that. Yep. There you go. Perfect. All so, right. So, yeah, um, as we were talking live before the show started on our Facebook Live, if you follow us there, uh, we've got a new affiliate with Amazon. Uh, what we're encouraging our listeners and viewers to do is to help support the show is just click our Amazon banner, and you can sign up for any of their programs, including their Amazon video, purchase your DVDs, Blu-rays, any other fun stuff you get from Amazon. And the cool thing is, they're going to actually, as an affiliate, send us a little bit of money of what you spent. It doesn't cost you anything, though, other yeah, than what you're buying. Yeah, it's, it's uh, their way of, uh, you know, when you shop through them, all you're doing is letting them know, yes, we are talking about them, and you've heard us talk about them, and uh, it's our advertising uh, fees that we get. So yeah. That's awesome. Because being in studio isn't cheap. <laughs> and, uh, but Dominic is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as evident by the shoes I saw in his car, so. Uh. You have to tune into the before the show show to um, know about what we were talking about there, though. Right, and that'll stay up on our Patreon. Yeah, so. Uh, but Scott's got a little jet lag this week. You were out in Phoenix. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Um, I'm recovering now. Um, over the years, I've been getting better at the recovery process. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, when you fly out west, um, Phoenix, this time of year, is three hours behind because they don't do the uh, daylight savings time. Right. Uh, whereas winter, they're two hours behind. Um, going out there, I can adjust very fast. But when you come back this way, it, it becomes much more difficult to uh, adjust. <laughs> so it, it usually <laughs> takes a few days to really uh, be on all cylinders. Yeah, the last couple times I've done that show, uh, I was driving, um, which helped a little bit, but you're still tired. You're still thrown off a little bit. I get thrown off just being there because it gets to be around 8 o'clock at night, which is 11 here, and I'm tired and it's still quite bright and sunny and <laughs> well and whenever you do uh, that that was like a two and a half day drive wasn't it well well we did it on the way back in two days we really pushed ourselves the second day but typically to not really hurt ourselves it's that it's two and a half days just to make it easier um the hardest part is i think the initial day when we leave because we drive all the way to oklahoma city because we want to get through the desert mm -hmm. get out of uh well that area just and then it makes it a little bit easier heading in uh, back to Michigan here, so right. it's a long drive. That so, yeah. um, one thing I also want to mention, and uh, she's watching. She mentioned her video is a little fuzzy. That could be the connection on her end because we look fine on the video we've got here. Uh, Connie, the Comic Con mom, is listening in today, and she was with me this past weekend in Traverse City. I'll be talking about that. She had an awesome time, but she has a new Facebook page. Go to facebook.com/slash the Comic Con mom, and you can like her page. She's gonna be posting about all her fun exploits with all of her Comic Con kids that she meets along the way and all the uh, cool celebrities that want to have fun with uh, the comic on mom, take pictures with her, and, and just uh, dote on mom, because mom's awesome. <laughs> yes, she is, yeah, and everyone loves her. As uh, you know, our, one of our listeners, uh, Janice, who was out at Motor City Comic Con this past weekend, and, or well, two weekends ago now, yeah. and she had the chance to meet Connie up front and in person, <laughs> so that was cool. Well, that was my favorite thing. It was, uh, you were telling her that uh, Brett was here. She's oh, cool, I'll have to go meet him. And you go, and also Connie, the Comic Con mom, she's like, ah, oh, she ran right over. Yeah. So obviously, I'm chopped liver. <laughs> <laughs> and the real celebrity is Connie, the Comic Con mom. So. Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> and another person who was at Motor City Comic Con is um, Alan Tom, who is uh, was a pleasure to see again. And he is one of the co owners of one of our sponsors, the Chubby Duck. Yeah. And uh, just want to give a shout out to them and let everyone know that's a Chubby Duck Detroit is serving sushi and their signature Japanese cones made fresh daily. Ranked number eight hottest restaurants in Detroit, May 2017, and rated four and a half out of five by Zagat. They're located at 208 East Grand River Avenue in Detroit. So summer is here, and in addition to their everyday menu, they have custom order party trays available, perfect for graduation parties, which my daughter has a graduation party coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a senior, and, uh, so, and a lot of other people, too. So... Yeah, look them up for the graduation parties. Those will they'll be a hit. Also, for any social or business events you may have, they can uh, provide food for that also. It's a great way to feed your guests with delicious food different from the standard sandwiches, burgers, and hot dogs. Call 313-400-5414 for a quote or look them up on Facebook at Chubby Duck Detroit. And they also have uh, Grubhub and it looks like uh, Food Junkie are 
Coms are a way to order online as well. Oh yes. Um, one and though, there, thing there's, on this too was I've been noticed they uh, this past weekend they did post they were staying open over the weekend for the electronics festival. So they will have weekend hours as the summer goes on with a lot of stuff going on in downtown Detroit there. Yeah, their, their hours currently are Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. However, as Brett said, uh, if, you, if you tune into their Facebook page, they are looking at adjusting their hours um, for weekend hours as well as for special events going on that weekend. So like them and follow them on Facebook and stay up to date on what they're doing. And speaking of Al from Chubby Doug, something exciting happened for him just recently here, isn't it? Uh, yes. Um, he, Alan is a uh, fellow nerd like me, a uh, Star Wars geek, and uh, just as I'm in the 501st, he's been working to, to join. And his co his first costume has just been approved, so uh, it's an Imperial officer mm -hmm. uh, costume. So he's excited about that, and he's currently working on his TK, which for non-Star Wars geeks it is Stormtrooper. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he's working to finish that up now, he's getting close. And hopefully that costume will be approved soon also. And he was around wearing that at Motor City Con. It was really great to see Al. Uh, really appreciate him stopping by to visit with us uh, all weekend long. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's very excited. I'm excited to do some troops with him coming up for various charity events and things like that. So, yeah. But speaking of Motor City Comic Con, we had a great time there. Now, Scott and I were not set up next to each other, uh, which works perfectly for us because we see enough, enough of each other as it is on the show. But <laughs> <laughs> And in the car. And, and in, in the, the hotel car. room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I had, we had a great time. Uh, one thing about Motor City for me is it was the first show I ever did as a fan back in 1991 when they were in Dearborn. And it was also the very first show I ever set up at uh, after publishing uh, the comic, uh, Boomtown Scabs. Uh, when John and I did that, so we, uh, setting up at that show is like going home for me. I know a ton of people, uh, not just fans, but just other friends that are set up there that come around. And it's really great to see everybody. Um, I try to walk around a little bit, and I can't get more than 50 feet in without being stopped by somebody that sees me, or I, I stop because I see somebody, and catching up with people, it's a great time. It's like a family reunion in a lot of ways. Oh, definitely, and like you, Motor City was my very first Comic-Con also. Um, and that was in 2010 was my first mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah it's it, it's interesting as both of ours first there so that's cool um, always a great show fans are fantastic out here um, you know this year it was a little awkward because the parking lot was all t torn up so there was a well they're building a new there. new hall um, right so I'm excited they did to see where that goes. The parking I noticed that the parking um, on the uh, is on the west side where they're tearing up they had right. a new lot and leaving on uh, Sunday, I was able to notice it better. It was paved, and it looked like it helped quite a few cars. So I know I didn't hear too many complaints about parking on Saturday. Surprisingly, I heard more on Sunday. I think um, it actually it felt <laughs> like it was actually busier on Sunday. Yes. And a lot of the fans I spoke to said they actually avoided Saturday because of how long, how crowded Saturdays were in past years. Yeah. So I wonder if if. Everyone had the same vibe to go on <laughs> Sunday instead. I think they were worried, uh, but I will give you this. The Motor City Comic Con was really great about posting online, posting on their Facebook, letting people know Correct. about every bit of parking that you could do. They had a shuttle service running from the local high school. Um, so they, they did everything they could as a show to help people get to the show. They can only do so much. They can't control just because twice as many people come as was expected. Right. And parking is, is limited even when they can sit a few thousand cars. You got 20,000 cars showing up, so it's always good to buddy up when you come to the cons anyways. Right. And um, but they did a great job, and I do want to give a shout-out to them for that. Oh, yeah, and Motor City did put together a, a great uh, guest list. Uh, Barbara Eden was there, John Barrowman. Um, Ron Perlman was Ron there. Perlman. I talked to Kelly LeBrock for a brief moment. Oh, yeah, and same uh, with Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall. Um, I always forget the guy's name that played Wyatt. <laughs> the other guy. Uh, he, the other guy. He just started coming around the cons here recently because he was a teacher, I guess, in Texas. Yeah, he was the best friend of Anthony Michael Hall. Right, and, and I got a chance to talk with, and I wanted to get an interview, but we ran out of time. Uh, good friend of the show, Jordan Trevelyan. She was set up there. Yep. Um, and Michael Rooker and Mike. Sean Gunn, both from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Mary Poppins himself was there. Yes. Um, <laughs> a quick story. Two quick stories, too, with Michael Rooker. Um, I unfortunately missed because instead of being with the 501st where my heart is, I was actually working my art table. But um, when he first came in, he walked up to the 501st booth and just yelled out, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> and they all broke up, broken cheers over that, cheering him on. And then another part, I think it was Sunday, I forget what day, um, 
we have a large a group of guys and girls who have predator costumes, and they were all there dressed up as predators. There was like six or seven of them, and Michael Rooker was doing his photo shoots with the fans. And when that wrapped up, Michael Rooker comes out of the you know they got that curtained off area. Right. He comes out with a megaphone and he, <laughs> he yells, "All predators, get over here!" <laughs> he wanted a photo with the predators, so they all went running and they got. They got a whole series of photos with him, uh, different poses. Um, he's, he's one of those guys yeah. that, regardless of what Comic-Con you go to, he's great with the fans. He has too much fun. <laughs> him, John Barrowman, too. Um, oh, yeah. I knew a lot of people that were really excited about his panel. His panels this year have been popping up online, and they've just been insane. So Google John Barrowman panels uh, on YouTube. Yeah, Maybe he, we'll try to get a couple links on the website, but it's it's just... Uh, he. I like when the celebrities are having a good time with the fans yeah. and are embracing... Uh, the characters they were embracing the fact that uh, everybody's coming loves these characters. Yeah, and you, it, it seems like you get two types of celebrities in, at Comic Cons. You get the ones who are there and truly appreciate being there. Um, they tru they appreciate their fans and they want to do the best possible for the fans. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you get the celebrity who they seem angry that they're doing a Comic Con <laughs> and they don't want to talk to anybody and they're like very standoffish. And, um, you know, and, you know, to be fair to them, they're actors. We're, we see them as these public figures, but the reality is their job is usually in a, they got a small circle of people with cameras around them. They're filming their show. Right. They're not performing in front of millions of people live. They're, it's through the TV or whatever. So, they could be introverted, and and many are, and, right? And I think some of they can, when they do come out of that shell a little bit, it's just hard when you got the adoring fans that run at you, and, right. and I can understand why some get a little bit. I like the ones that really embrace the, the and fans. then some are just jerks. Well, <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> just I won't name names. No, we're not names. But I know names. a few. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, most have always. But most. Um, most, far, most are great. great. Uh, I said hi to Kelly LeBrock. She was really nice. Um, I talked to Rob Schneider for a moment. He was there. Uh, also very gracious, very happy to be there. Uh, seemed to be having a good time with everybody. Yeah. And um, and I don't go and uh, wait in line to meet all these people because we have our own businesses to run while we're at the show. But I happened to be right. walking around for a moment on Friday. They weren't busy. And I told them, I said, would you mind if I just come up and said hi? And they were like, sure. And, um, and I told them, I said, you know, I'd like to get on Earth, but I'm here and I'm trying to make a living. And Rob Schneider, he goes, you and me both, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, in addition to the celebrity guests, too, there were amazing artists there, and we had a chance to interview um, a number of them. And the, they'll be popping, those interviews will be popping up on our YouTube channel. Yeah, which you need to go to subscribe to. We've got links on the website, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. Yes. That's our first goal, so yep. definitely check it out. We'll be posting videos every few days or when the interviews we get. Like the first one uh, I posted up from the show was the Katie Cook interview. Right. Yeah, so go to youtube.com. Do a search for Odd Musings and you should find our channel there. Our logo is there yeah. set on the page so you should be able to find us and hit subscribe. And we should have links on oddmusings.com as well to get you there. Uh, yes. So we will do that as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, actually, and if you can't find the fit YouTube you can go to oddmusings.com to our video page, and that links directly to the YouTube, and you can also watch through there. Right. But, but we would really appreciate a follow. Even if you plan on watching the videos through our, our website, still go to YouTube, hit follow that way, or subscribe, I should say. That way we get the credit. Um, yeah. It has to do with the um, inner workings of YouTube. Uh, 1,000 followers is a key number to reach for us to grow the business further. Um, and unlock certain options that we would be able to. It helps to. us get some ad review going. Yeah. That will help pay for the show so we can continue on. Maybe eventually get a little bit better equipment for video while we're traveling. Well, in addition to that, though, it also opens up. Um, they allow longer videos. They yeah. allow. There, there's other. There's many things in addition to that that they allow. So, so help us out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and yeah. uh, we, and we'll do our best to keep content coming out that you're going to like. Yeah, and we've got the Katie Cook one up there. Uh, yeah, we also uh, had a chance to talk with J5. Yeah, well, before you move on, yeah. uh, Katie Cook. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Katie real quick. She's awesome. I've known her for years. You've known her even longer. Um, a little bit about her. She has Gronk. She does her self-creator book called Gronk. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice square, uh, almost looks like a children's book, but it's uh, uh, she does a one-page comic she was doing every week online. Right. Um, she's collected the first four volumes. She's got more coming from that, she said, but she's got other creator projects. But Gronk was one of my favorites that she's done. Uh, I even mentioned that during the uh, 
interview with her, and she has a stuffed uh, Gronk, which I'm going to have to get one of these days because it's the coolest little thing. Um, but Gronk's a lot of fun. It's yeah. in the vein of uh, Calvin and Hobbes in some ways. Um, a little more sarcasm, I think. Yeah, yeah, a little <laughs> more sarcasm. And as far and with Katie yeah. Cook, I'm sure there was a little wine yeah. involved. For, for for those who don't know Katie, Katie's art and and, um, and wit, definitely check her out. She's she. That's what always amazes me with her. Like when she would do the commissions for those little painted cards. Yeah. Um, there there are these cute little an, um, illustrations that she does, but what always amazed me is no matter what the fandom is or whatever, whatever was requested for that artwork, her on the spot wit was so spot on and, and funny yeah. with these little drawings and she's always just so quick. I've got one, and she, I had her, she, she goes, what do you want? I said, uh, George Lucas. So she did George Lucas holding the idol from Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> See? It, yeah. So just fun stuff like that. Yeah, and so uh, um, check her out. Uh, you will definitely, I, I think you'll love her wit. And then she also has done My Little Pony in the past. She does. Yeah, she, she was writing on that for a while. Um, she's done a lot some cover art. Yeah. Uh, she's done work for Disney. She's done work for Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm yep. was one of her early things she did. Yes. And she was quite well known for that. She's an honorary member of the 501st and the Rebel Legion. Uh, and she's really proud of that because she's a big Star Wars fan. Yeah, so definitely get on YouTube, follow us, subscribe to us, and check out Katie's interview, which is, the full interview is posted up there already right now, so you can check that out. Right. And that moves on to the other some other people we interviewed, Jay well, Fife. We had Jay Fife. You did that. Um, that mm -hmm. was an awesome interview. Uh, I've known Jay for, I thought it was longer than what he said for going to cons, but uh, he mentioned that in the interview when he started doing conventions. Um, he's one of those guys I felt like I've known forever. He's been a good friend. Uh, I've been a big admirer of his work. He's just, the, what he can do with just a number two pencil is just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's, it, his artwork is out of this world. He's, the way he renders his artwork is great. And yeah, he um, goes with the traditional pencils. Um, it, it's all pencil. That he does, well, he does other mediums too, but, right. but what he's known for is his pencils. And they're beautifully done. He works with live models mm -hmm. for... Um, all of it for the poses. He does like a pinup style art for a lot of his things, but he also does things beyond pinups. And um, but it, it, it's a good blend of the modern day characters mixed with that '50s or so pinup style. Right. And so it, it, it's a lot of fun. Beautiful shading work that he does, and uh, he's definitely one. When I'm doing pencil pieces, I like to pull up his work to kind of for inspiration, right? Like to help me with, with that kind of work. Yeah, and then of course, uh, just to kind of segue from Jay Five over to Josh Warner real quick. I got a chance to interview my pal Josh Warner, uh, who does uh, the Adventures of Mighty Moose, also known as Moose Smith. Uh, it's uh, he did the Latin name on it. He had to come up with the Adventures of Mighty Moose years later to have people understand what. And just, just to <laughs> clarify, because Dominic has a confused face over there, we're saying Warner with an A, uh, not Werner with an E. There are two artists. <laughs> there's a Josh Warner, which is with Source Point Press, also a great artist. And then there's Josh Warner, Warner with an A, <laughs> with a Hanging Chad comics. <laughs> yeah, so. That. But that's got to be confusing for those two all the time. I was at first until I had to meet uh, Josh Werner and realize, okay, it's not the same guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Jay did uh, the pencils for Josh's uh, new Mighty Moose book that came out at the Motor City Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Pencils were just fantastic. And then uh, it was colored. Uh, it was one of the first color issues that he's done. Uh, so Josh did that. So it was a nice, cool collaboration between, between two really good talents. Um, Jake, Jay's an awesome illustrator in his own right. Josh is an awesome illustrator, as well as one of the best inkers I know, um, and he did a great coloring job on that. The cover was awesome. It, a lot of fun. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the series. So check out The Adventures of Mighty Moose with Josh Warner. Mm -hmm. I had a good talk with him. I've known him for many years, and it's always good to catch up with, with him. He's like a brother to me, so I really enjoy talking to him anytime I can. Yeah. Um, but then and next to him was Sean Forney. Sean too. Forney. Also, uh, always a pleasure seeing Sean. We see him all over the country all the time. Um, can't say enough about him. I, I mean, he's an amazing artist, even better person. Yeah. Um, he's a he's a triple threat on this stuff. I mean, he's he's not just a great artist. Triple threat. <laughs> he's also uh, he you know he writes some good stories with his his creator own projects. Uh, he's still the absolute best colorist I know, and I've said that many times. Yeah, um, yeah. What he can do with colors is phenomenal. Sean's work can be found on a lot of uh, stuff with uh, Rob Liefeld's stuff. Yep. Uh, his comics, I'm blanking on the exact title names off the top of my head. He's done some Dead Deadpool, I believe. And De Deadpool, he's done. That's with um, Myrit. 
I'm not positive. I'm blank. So I'm gonna, I'm they, he, they all work together. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I know he's done other work here and there. He's got tons of stuff coming out. Uh, he'll be at the San Diego show in July, and I know he's probably got a piece in their uh, yearbook they do every year. Yeah, so, we, you know, and those interviews will be posting up hopefully later this week, next week the latest, but uh, we'll be getting up these full interviews that we had with Sean and Josh. Also, yeah. uh, And then we also had another interview, too, with Rachel Kaiser, a longtime friend of both of ours yeah. also, and amazing besides, artist. Besides, uh, she's got a great disney esque style, but she's also an animator. She studied animation, and uh, she's actually doing a lot of freelance work within yeah. that right now. Um, she's always fun to see at the shows. Uh, her quirky sense of humor, especially with uh, what she likes to do with Daleks and Doctor Who stuff, is always great. All right. Now, be before we move on, though, there is a story we got to share from Motor City. Now, I have a history of fire alarms. <laughs> Everywhere I go, for some reason, there's fire alarms at the hotels or cons that I'm at. But for, so the hotel we're staying at this week that we get a good friend of ours, Brian. Uh, <laughs> who, uh, uh, he did call me to say get out of the hotel it's well, on fire <laughs> well, pr but prior to this the, the, the day before we get there we're checking in and uh, Brian and um, and uh, Dar Darlene Dar um, Dar Darlene's daughter I know there? it's her niece oh uh, niece I'm her sorry. niece Maddie Maddie that's uh, it. Well, let Brett tell the story because he, he knows the people. <laughs> I know well, them but I don't know their relationship. I've known Darlene uh, at the show for years uh, before her and Brian got together yeah. uh, and they're, they're Brian's a really good friend as well um, so we're standing there at the uh, front desk getting a couple of things before we head upstairs and all of a sudden uh, out of earshot I hear is that Brett and I turn around and here comes Maddie and, and yeah. she's such a cool kid she's graduating also this year just like Ashley and right um, real proud of that kid too. I've seen her grow up the last few years, and she's yeah. a solid individual. And um, I was glad to see her because I don't get to see her, but at Motor City usually once in a while when I do the Akron Comic Con, she comes out. But, um, so what's funny is funny. so <laughs> so then we ask, well, is Brian here too? And yes, and so we're like, well, what room is he in? She's like, <laughs> she's like two twenty one. Yeah. So we're like, okay. So we go up to room 221. <laughs> so I knock on the door. and when the No, you didn't knock on the door. I banged on the door. <laughs> Brett bangs the door really hard multiple times and yells, No, bye, please, open up. <laughs> and I put my fingers over the peephole so they can't peek out. And, and then the door slowly creaks open. <laughs> and this little Asian man's head pokes out, <laughs> looking frightened. <laughs> so I look at him and goes, Brian here? He's like, no, no Brian. I said, all right, we must have the wrong room. Thank you. <laughs> and he like shuts the door and you hear it locking. You hear all the deadbolts going. And then me and Brad are just laughing. I chair going underneath the oh, door now too. We were laughing so hard in that hallway. So then the fire alarm happens yeah. the next night. And um, so we're talking to Brian. We're like, what room are you in? And he was in room 231, yeah. not 221. Yeah. So... <laughs> so it was, it was funny. I think the story turned out funnier though without uh, getting well, that, in the right room. I had set my phone uh, to silent so it didn't go off during the night because uh, with three of us in the room and two that get up way early, I didn't have to worry about an alarm. And so he had called me, he had texted me, he had called me on Facebook. Uh, trying to get his whole saying, hey, the hotel's on fire, you need to get out. <laughs> right. Couldn't kind of find out there was a little fire room, they, they contained it. Um, yeah. We got back in after about 45 minutes. I slept for two more, two more hours. You and Mom stayed up for a while and and that, but and it, it was it's a fun story. I mean, we don't like fire alarms. We've had a few in our lives at these shows, and uh, fortunately, this one was actually a legitimate one. Usually, it's someone playing a prank, and they think it's funny to wake everybody up at three in the morning. Yeah, for some somehow the the heating unit caught on fire. Yeah. Who knows what they were doing on that? But it I it, it got it got stopped fast enough and taken care of. So that's cool. So, but we were got some coffee in the morning, had a good breakfast. Uh, yeah, another good breakfast place we had was that uh, the Breakfast oh, Club. Oh, the Breakfast Club in uh, well, it's Farmington. Farmington Hills, right? It's off of like Ten Mile Grand River yeah, area. That was oh, delicious. Oh man! So yeah, we ended up eating there two days in a row. Yeah, because we were with Kevin Miner yeah. and Brandy. And, and if uh, you ever travel, bring Kevin Miner with you <laughs> because he always finds the best food places. Yes, he he's, he knows food, and I enjoy that. That's and one beer. of the things I enjoy about him: food and beer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's always a lot of fun. So we had a great time at Motor City. Yeah, we um, loved it. The show uh, is always uh, exhausting in the best of ways. And uh, definitely look back to being back next year, uh, seeing everybody. In the meantime, those that are listening and don't see us, definitely keep checking us out here at Odd Musings. Check out our respective pages for our artwork. 
we are doing other shows. You're welcome to travel and fly across the country to see us, like in Vegas and Denver, as that comes up too. Indeed. And that. But uh, speaking of uh, motor City show, before we move on here, we did do a great interview with Vinny from T minus twenty four, one of our sponsors. Yes. And uh, you handled that one. That was that was a lot of fun. Yep. And those watching on the video right now, I'm wearing one of my T minus twenty four shirts. It's the Palpatine Vader for twenty twenty. So. No it's matter, useless to resist. It's useless to resist. <laughs> uh, no matter what political party you belong to, we can all get around and get behind the Sith ruling the galaxy, I believe. Uh, you don't want to follow those terrorist rebels. Uh, they're, they're rule breakers, drug smugglers. You don't want to get in with that lot. Vote <laughs> Sith, vote often. There you go. There's a political <laughs> 2020 Palatine Vader. If you like this shirt or a number of other shirts, whatever your fandom is, go to t-24.com. Yep. And uh, you can also follow them on Facebook. And just for those listening, it's a T E E M I N U S, the number two, number four. Right. And don't forget uh, to use our coupon code O D D, and you're going to get ten percent off your entire purchase and free shipping. That's right. And that's so, uh, like I said, follow them on all their uh, social medias. Plus, you're going to be able to see them this weekend with me at the Tricon Show in Huntington, West Virginia. It's on Saturday only. It's a one day show from ten to six. One of the uh, most fun one-day shows out there. Um, I'm good friends with uh, Eric Watson, one of the promoters of the show from uh, Broken Icon Comics. Um, it's a lot of fun. I can't I can't stress how much fun I have the show, and I haven't been back in three years. And I'm so excited to be back to see all the fans down there again, uh, to hang out with them. One-day show, they're going to bring in several thousand people. Pl plus, there's plenty of parking. Don't worry, it's right downtown Huntington. You can park anywhere. Um, I think there's free parking everywhere too, because it's one of those downtowns that does that. Uh, right near Marshall University. Nice. Um, but they're going to be set up there. It's going to be a great time to hang out with them. Uh, making a special appearance this weekend will be Connie, the Comic-Con mom. <laughs> She's going to get tired of us promoting her like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so be there with me. So definitely go check out uh, T-24. They are live at the show. If you can't make it, go to their website, order some comics, or comics, order some t-shirts that are based on some great fandom stuff out there. Um, get stuff shipped to your house. Wear it all the time. Promote them, send them some money, because the more money you send them, eventually they may renew as a sponsor as the time comes. And also, if uh, you're not into t-shirts, but you like decals or bumper stickers, things like that, they carry all of that, too. they got a huge selection and uh, high quality, too. A lot of people like them. So, uh, is the Team Minus 24 interview up yet? Uh, that one will be going up. I'll try to get that up before I leave on Friday, so, so it'll be up by tomorrow. Tune into that interview um, on YouTube, because... We really get into the quality of their products and we show the selection they have, and and he and Vinny gets into more about the quality of their shirts and things like that too. They truly take pride in everything they, they do. They really do. Yeah. They do a great job. I can't um, speak highly enough of them. Yeah. So it's, it's just, uh, so check out tmis 24com uh, order stuff, and uh, we'll be promoting them as we keep going on, of course. All right. Uh, now we have a, a a nice little segue into another Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, we. This has been you know for those listening, this has been like. <laughs> This is the busy time of year for Comic-Con artists. Um, you know, like, thankfully I got this weekend off. I'm not going to Tricon. Um, I, I wish I was. But at the same time, I've done like 10 shows in the last 13 weeks. So it'll be nice to actually be home and work on some. I got my comic book to finish up and things like that. Yeah, so that Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, the Kickstarter deadline is fast approaching. <laughs> and um, so anyway, so, but last week I was at Phoenix Comic-Con and I did break my streak of of having the show interrupted by fire alarms yeah because like the last four years that i've been there a fire alarm went off in the show yeah so while we didn't have a fire alarm though we did have a gun incident <laughs> and that was uh thursday um big credit to uh the phoenix police department they were alerted they were on it really quick the gentleman never had a chance to even pull out a gun uh, a lot of mixed stories what's going on i'm not going to get into that you can google that to find out what's going on there but they did a great job in uh, stopping the situation before it happened yeah. and protecting the fact that they get 100,000 fans that come out throughout the weekend to that show. Yeah. And that, so they did a great job there. Yeah, um, from, from an insider's point of view, um, to be honest, I didn't even know it happened. Um, until I, I texted you. That you was you I was, notified me, yeah. and, and then shortly after you texted me, I started getting all these other texts. Um, I guess it happened earlier in the day um, on Thursday before the show opened. Uh, there was criticism about the um, the show's handling of it, where the the, the gunmen got inside of the building, um, and people criticized that. But really, the first layer of security was inside the building, so he never got past the first layer of security, is my understanding. Right. And uh, but the, 
and people want to criticize the show for having the security inside. This is Phoenix. You got people in full costumes. They have to make a decision. Are they going to make people wait outside in 110 degrees for two hours? Yeah. Or do you let them inside the first layer of the building where there's air conditioning and people aren't fainting? <laughs> right. And they, so, they do a really good job of trying to right. accommodate so, the fans as best they can. So that's why the, the line of security, the, the first line of security was where it was. Mm -hmm. Once this event happened, and you know, like, like Brett said, read up online, find the story online, you can find it, uh, whatever the current story is. It, it evolves, so as they're getting more evidence, things And unfortunately, changed. there's a lot of uh, probably miscommunication, misquotes, uh, creative writing involved with the story. Yeah, so... Uh, but um, but the, the show handled it the best they could. I they know did. they made uh, some changes to costuming, props, things like that. That was also uh, an evident reading is not just the show saying we've got to do something to protect the fans. The Phoenix Police Department said, look, we can't, this is too much to have everybody walking around with all right. these weapons. So, so the basic so. the basic change was they a they did move these line of security outside. The all bags and everything were being checked. Weapon all weapons props, even if they were fictitious weapons like lightsabers or, or Harry Potter wands, none of those were allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and and there were there was a little bit of backlash online. Actually, a lot. If you <laughs> there were a lot of internet backlash. Right, but within the show itself, people handled it great. He, the 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 cosplayers were funny. They they were um, creative in what they did. I believe somebody made like a million dollars just selling bananas. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, like there was like for instance the Rick Grimes the uh, Rick Grimes cosplayer in his in his holster instead of Rick's you know well known pistol, he had a banana in his holster, yeah. and he would pose for pictures holding the banana like a pistol. <laughs> and you know, um, there was a Mierda. Uh, cosplayer from uh, this movie Brave, and she had a, she had the banana, you know, and the curve of the banana was the bow, and she had a little string tied, and she walked around. And that was her bow and arrow. <laughs> Some people took giant pieces of cardboard, and they they hand drew like a sword or a gun on. Like one person put a, a just what pew pew, and they would <laughs> hold that. So people people had fun with it, and I, I thought that both the fans and the show handled the uh, change really well. And there's going to be a lot of shows that are going to do uh, this type of uh, limitation on props. Uh, Denver, the last couple of years, has already had one in place. Mm -hmm. They reiterated that this year that they've already done that. And let people know it's, it's all for the safety. And the problem is, is even with like the orange tips on guns, things like that, things can slip through the cracks, and they want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. You don't want any incidents at a Comic-Con. Well, you don't. And even, even there was just a new story this morning about um, the Orlando airport. Yeah. There was a situation where a man was um, had a standoff with police with a gun, and it, it caused everything to get shut down. And after they finally arrested him and stuff, thankfully there was no shootout. It turned out he was, it was an airsoft gun. He had a fake gun. Yeah, but it looks real. Yeah, they do, and you can't you can't you know, trust that. Yeah, so you know it's you know uh, my 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 thing is you know if you have an event with a hundred thousand people, you're bound to have one jerk in the bunch. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> you know. And but most of the people there are not malicious. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. So well, I wasn't in Phoenix this year. Uh, I've seen the crowds there, and they truly enjoy being at that show. Oh yeah, and, and unfortunately, it did affect the turnout um, because of the long lines that occurred Friday from the security changes. Um, it was on the on the news how there were two to three hour waits, and from talking to fans, uh, there was a, a noticeable drop in attendance on Saturday, um, and uh, Sunday was down too. But I think Sunday was better than Saturday. But a lot of the fans said when they saw on the news it was a three-hour wait to get in, they didn't want to. And didn't that, want to wait that, that will scare people, so, especially when it's 110 degree heat. Yeah, and unfortunately, even if it's just dry. You know, and unfortunately for the promoters of Phoenix Comic Con, they felt some of the backlash of that. Some vendors had issues. There's there a story online about Ultra Savers, how they were removed from the show. Um, there's two sides to that story. Um, I'm not gonna. I mentioned I, my opinion on it, but I can't comment it without being there to yeah. actually see. I can only go on what was posted. But, so yeah, so each side has their story, but you know they're a longtime vendor who, and, and I, I believe even their version, they didn't want to follow the um, guidelines set forth for selling weapons in the show. Well, and the guidelines yeah. were actually set forth by the Phoenix Police Department. That was uh, stressed by the show, um, right. and they, they wanted to comply with that and. I can understand why they did it. It was strictly all in safety for everybody. So right. no one was, I think also with the, the weapon thing, selling them in the show is, you know, they wanted them bagged up a certain way. 
So when they walked outside, nobody thought they'd come out with a weapon, and the yeah. police see that and panic. Well, and also, though, in, inside of the show, now this is my own personal theory, but you have a limited staff, yes. and you're trying to manage 100,000 people. It's crucial for that staff to be able to with I just I spot they're, they're, they're checking everybody's hands and they want to see is there something in that person's hand and even if it's a lightsaber or a magic wand or something fake if they see something in your hand they have to then pause and take a moment to for their brain to say oh, okay that's a safe weapon right well those few seconds could add up between all these people where when you have somebody with a potential real threat they're too busy trying to judge what fake weapons are truly fake right. versus what the real threat is. So by having everyone's hands pretty much empty of objects, it becomes easier, I, I think, to spot check. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's, yeah. uh, it's a good safe thing. And I like how the cosplayers that truly embraced it found other ways to have fun with their cosplays. Exactly, and that, that's what it's about. It, it's yeah. Comic-Con, it's about having fun, and you know, the reality is, if, if you're so upset, you know, I saw certain cosplayers saying they're never going to go to the show again because they couldn't bring their gun or their weapon that they worked hard on. Well, I'm, I'm also, I also like to costume. I'm a stormtrooper with the 501st. My blaster is part of my costume. However, I'm not so self-involved that I can't recognize the safety of everyone at a show is more important than my blaster. I'll leave it at home. It's right. that easy. So... Follow and it, the rules of the show. It's not that hard. Have fun, have fun with it. And a lot of shows are going to be doing this too, so it's not just going to yeah. be Phoenix and that. But while you were there, you had some really cool interviews. I did. Um, I, I had I had a couple. I'll, I'll quickly cover two of them because I actually got video interviews with them, and we'll be posting those also on our YouTube channel. One was with Michael Stackpole, who is, um, in my mind, a legendary Star Wars author. He also has worked on other um, franchises and has his own... Uh, series as well, but in the world of Star Wars, he was one of the major authors for the X-Wing series. Uh, he also did I, Jedi, which uh, he was the creator of uh, Corrin Horn, which was a popular expanded universe character. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we talk, uh, we, in the interview, we'll cover uh, what it is to write for a franchise universe like Star Wars, um, what type of advice he'd give himself if he could go back in time. Um, and we, we talked about a quick little funny story, too. It reminded me of the scene in King Kong where, um, where um, oh, what, what's the actor's name? Uh, Riley, Riley, <laughs> Riley. John C. Riley? John C. Riley. Okay, he's about where, Skull Yeah, and he's like, they're like, what, what are they called? And he's a, they're skull crawlers. <laughs> then, then they're like, what? And he's like, never mind. I never said it out loud. It sounds stupid now that I say it. <laughs> you know, and we were talking about how there's these words in the Star Wars universe and other universes where, you know, because we were talking about the Yuzong Vong. <laughs> which was like the alien insect type people who were invading the Star Wars universe. Yeah. I always called them Yazong Bong. I didn't know how to pronounce it. It's a weird spelling. And he corrected me, and I'm like, well, you know, does that happen a lot? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, well, what about like in reverse? Like, do, do you ever see a word and like you've never even said it? And he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's talking about how when you're doing the audio books, they'll come to him like, how do you pronounce these words? He's like, I have no idea. Come up with your own. Because <laughs> they're just in your head. And I meant to ask him and I forgot because we kept getting interrupted by these overhead announcements. Yeah. Um, I meant to ask him, do, does he ever feel like John C. Riley, where he's like, when someone says it out loud, he's like, you know what? <laughs> I never said it out loud before, never mind. <laughs> but I, I never got the chance to ask. But that was one interview. Another great interview was um, with Sebastian Jones of Stranger Comics. Now, he, he's not an everyday name, um, but the Stranger Comics is a really awesome independent comic book company. Mm -hmm. And they currently have a Kickstarter up. Uh, for one of their comic book series called Niobe. If you go on to Kickstarter and you type in N-I-O-B-E, you will find them. And uh, I don't know how clearly you'll see it on the Facebook video, but here's one of their books, uh, Niobe, and this is The Untamed. I got to interview Sebastian, um, amazing people. Their Kickstarter right now is at like $31,000 so far, and it's only been a little over a week that they've been up. They've got a great following, uh, the comic book, great quality to it, great writing. Um, and what's exciting for Sebastian Jones is right after, I, I interviewed him, I believe it was Saturday, and Sunday, uh, another great artist, Jay Lee, who is known for uh, some Superman, Batman, and many other things, he announced he's doing his first creator-owned comic in quite some time called Faye. 
And what they announced is Sebastian Jones is actually the writer of the comic book for um, J League. So that's exciting too. That sounds very cool. Yeah, so that, that interview will be posting up. And then one other talk I had, which unfortunately I didn't have my equipment with me at the time, so I didn't get it on video, but it was with artist Derek Riggs. And usually people don't know that name, but you know his work. And he's the creator and artist of the Iron Maiden albums. He created the character Eddie. Which is huge within the heavy metal community. Oh, yeah. And if you grew up in the 80s, you knew Eddie. Even if you had no idea who Iron Maiden was, you knew who Eddie was. Right. And um, so he had a whole bunch of um, original artwork there that he was drawing at the show of Eddie. Um, he was so fun to talk to. Uh, and he shared a... He, we talked about a couple different stories, but there was one in particular I want to share. Now, I'm going to have to paraphrase. Um, he's very... Um, he has a lot of colorful metaphors. Yeah. To put it. He's... Oh, geez. And I don't want to <laughs> offend because I don't know... I know they have a lot of distinctions between the, the boundaries. I believe he's from the UK. Um, but he has a thick, heavy accent. Okay. I think it's British, but you never know. Scottish, British. I'm American. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the distinctions. But I, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, he's from the UK. Right. Um and he shared a story about, uh, oh, so why I have to paraphrase is because the F-bomb is like every third for, for third word. Yeah, we posted this uh, video <laughs> after I edited it through. We're not going to take out the words, but I will be putting a not safe for work uh, on it this morning on that. So, um, yeah, so, but his story is this, and it's, it's another inspiration story, a moral story as far as uh, for artists out there who yeah. are trying to make it. When, when he was first starting out, he took his portfolio into this um, music stu studio. And he was showing off his artwork for because he wanted to do album covers for rock and roll bands. And the expert, the art director for that studio, reviewed his portfolio and told him, "This is crap. This isn't this isn't rock and roll art." Mm -hmm. And then he piled up an example of what is rock and roll art, and it was just this girl in this tiny dress bending over, something similar to Warren's Cherry Pie album, where it's just a girl bent over, looking sexy, and. Um, now this is far, be long before Warren's Cherry Pie, so I'm not sure what album cover he was talking about, but the point is, the guy's like, this is rock and roll art. And with some few choice words, Eddie, <laughs> or, or yeah. Derek, why did I say, oh, Eddie is the <laughs> character, yeah. <laughs> Derek is like, F this, F that, I don't need you. <laughs> he leaves. <laughs> well, years go by, he becomes a big hit with the Iron Maiden stuff, and that director finds him at a, an industry event, and he comes up to him. He's like, "You were the biggest mistake I ever made, <laughs> saying no to you." And but it's just a lesson, you know. He could have easily have had a thin skin and said, "You know, I, I'm just not good enough. I shouldn't be doing this," and and walked away with and, his head down. The problem uh, to me who do that, and I've right. said this for years to people, is rejection is going to happen. You know, all you need is one yes, and it may take you a hundred rejections to get that one yes. Right. And he stuck with it. Because if he hadn't stuck with it, who knows? I don't know if that was... <laughs> We're hitting, hearing a beep. So anyways... Um, it's 10.32 oh, a.m. Where the, are your children? <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other lesson, though, in this, too, is because... A, he could have just hung his head down in shame and said, I'm, I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. and stopped. Or, what he could have done is also said, Oh, this is what the expert says I should be doing. And he could have started doing all the scantily clad yeah. girls in tight skirts bending over and be like everyone else and he never would have actually accomplished what he ended up accomplishing right you get it and when you're doing stuff like that no matter what it is whether it's comics art writing movies whatever if you've got a vision of something you got to see it through to the end if you, you if you cop to the naysayers to the people who say well that's not really what this is you're not staying true to who you are and he did and look what kind of success he is yeah he's not the name that everybody rolls off the tongue with but everybody knows his art. It's on a billion T-shirts. It's on a billion posters. It's on a, you know, millions and millions of albums, cassettes, CDs. Everywhere you go, and all from the fact that he stuck with his guns and he said, yeah. "This is what I do, and this is what I'm going to go with." Yeah, a big part of art. I mean, there is an aspect to commercial art where you are simply the tool. You are the one creating the artwork for the client. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is also an element of art where you have to infuse yourself into it. Even with commercial art, there, there is some aspect of you you have to put into that. Mm -hmm. And um, too often, the experts want you to become generic. They want right. you to lose that part of you that makes your art yours. 
And you gotta have you, you gotta have the confidence and willpower to say no. I I am who I am. This is what I do, and it's okay if you say no to me. Right. Move on. There's a hundred. I don't. I would rather be a first rate me than a second rate somebody else. Exactly. So. Good way to put it. So yeah, so Derek was awesome to talk to. I, I really hope I run into him again sometime. Um, I'll have my uh, censorship button there to uh, bleep <laughs> out uh, every third word. But uh, he's such a nice guy, great guy. Yeah. So. So I think it kind of wraps up the Phoenix kind of. Yeah, like Phoenix really was good, great. Real time and uh, like some good food. You met some great people. Yep. Uh, you get to hang out with a pal Kevin Miner. Mm-hmm. And that, so that was a lot of fun. And Dominic. And Dominic, that's right. Dominic was there, and he was uh, selling uh, up on the Heroes floor or something. I believe you were, weren't you? Yep, I was there on the third floor, right by the entrance. I I also enjoyed the food, and um, <laughs> I, I thought that the security. I mean, I, I don't understand what the big deal was. They uh, they took care of it right away. Right, they did. no issue. I don't know why it was newsworthy. Yeah. Well, I think it's just the internet trolls having to spark yeah. some great problems, and actually have it try to throw a negative into it, which actually ended up being a very positive thing that happened in terms yeah. of them jumping on the situation and squashing it before anything did happen. Everybody did their job. Yep. There was no incident. Yet it's it was news. I remember people were sending me articles from the Detroit News about it. I'm like, what is the news here? <laughs> Everybody did their job. There was Everyone no incident. Right. And it was taken care of. And, I mean, and had it had it not been stopped, that would have been the tragedy. You know, yeah. some, someone would have gotten hurt. They would have closed the whole show down for the whole weekend. That would have been devastating. That would have hurt a lot of people's financial well being. Oh yeah, a lot of artists. Like, yeah. You know, I can't absorb a cost of doing a show like that and not making money. Right. So. You know, once again, hats off to the Phoenix Police, to the to the Phoenix Comic Con staff and volunteers. I, they really they made the best of a bad situation. Right, I think yeah. they handled better than a lot of other people would have. Yes. But, um, moving on to our next, and we haven't announced yet our uh, winner of the Imagine uh, tickets from the other week. Yeah, last week was a pre-recorded show, so um, we weren't able to announce our winner from the week before's contest. Right, and the winner was uh, Janice Miller from Northville, Michigan. And awesome. um, so her tickets are in the mail this in morning. In the mail, being hand carried <laughs> by some postal, person. U.S. postal person yep. with care. I gave them to the Comic Con mom to run through the post office on her errands. No, oh, so, so they were hand touched by Connie. Touched Connie. Connie. <laughs> so, which Janice will be excited because she was yes. excited to meet Connie, the Comic Con mom. So, so Janice, uh, hope you enjoy the movie, that, whatever movie you choose. And uh, yeah, let. Give us a shout out when you go and let us know what movie you saw and what you thought of uh, Imagine Theaters. Yeah, definitely look forward to hearing that. Uh, but speaking of the Comic Con mom, she was with me up in Traverse City, Michigan this past weekend for the Cherry Capital Comic Con. One thing. Yes. We, we passed by though, real quick, the current contest. Oh, that's right. We do have a current, current contest. Yeah, so for Imagine Theaters, um, the, Janice was the winner of the previous contest. The one that's up right now on our website through oddmusings.com, go to the Imagine Sponsors page. And it has to do with episode four of Odd Musings, where yeah. we interview um, Tracy Lee Coco. She was on Star Trek, on Baywatch, and a number of other things. But we we paid special attention to her Star Trek roles. Yeah. And her role as Lieutenant J. Yeah. And the contest question this week is, according to Tracy Lee Coco... How did her character, Lieutenant J, get her name? So, if you know that answer, you can answer it. If you don't know it, go to our past episodes, replay it, and you will hear it. Yep, and there's no video of episode four, but uh, we do have the audio up online on the website, oddmusings.com. Yeah, unfortunately, our video crashed <laughs> for some reason. So. Well, I may make a video, but it would just be a picture of us standing there. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, get in there, get your entries in, and win some tickets. Yep. So like I said, we were at the I was at the Cherry Capital Comic Con while Scott was in Phoenix. Um, I had Connie the Comic Con mom with me all weekend. We had a great time. I had the pleasure of being next to, uh, and I think it's just an interview because he was quite busy with commissions. Mark Teixeira, uh, which uh, the fun story about that is, uh, one of the first shows mom went to with me, uh, she sees in the program guide that Mark Teixeira is going to be at the show, and doesn't know mom is. She knows ESPN. She doesn't know comics, and she's like, oh my god, Mark Teixeira is going to be here. And I knew what she meant. I was like, Mom, that's not the New York Yankee. That is Mark Teixeira, the inker for <laughs> Marvel DC and tons of other stuff, an illustrator. So. Maybe that's his alter ego. <laughs> and he, he said that. He, I talked to him a little bit. He said, yeah, I've signed quite a few baseball. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, as long as there's a phone booth around, he can change into the other person. Right. So he does have fun with that, it sounds like. Uh, but the other thing was, next to him was Cooper Andrews. Now, that name may not sound familiar to some, may to others. He's Jerry from The Walking Dead. 
-hmm. I had a chance to sit down with him for several minutes and did a great interview. Um, I was warned ahead of time by his uh, by the gals with him uh, that books him in the shows that uh, he's not allowed to talk about spoilers for the upcoming season. Um, and I said, well, I'm not worried about talking about that because I wanted to talk a little bit about Halt and Catch Fire. Another show he was on, uh, he's not on this coming last season, but uh, we had to talk a lot about stuff. And I, one of the things with our interviews, is besides what they're doing, is just to talk about their lives in general. Uh, it was his first time in Michigan, so we talked about that. So when you check out the interview, I had a, just a lot of fun. Um, he was one of the most genuine guys I could talk to, who was excited to do the interview and excited to talk about everything he's got going on and just enjoyed being there. The best part for everybody this weekend, though, was he was giving out pie all weekend long. He had cherry pie, of course, and those that know Traverse City is the cherry capital of North America, and they always have a cherry capital or cherry festival in July. Uh, so he had that. He had apple pie, which uh, when my mom went and got my nephew an, uh, an autograph, uh, he gave her some apple pie, and uh, he obviously loves pie. <laughs> and that was I'm trying to remember, does Jerry have a pie in in uh, I don't remember Dead? so I'm not sure where it came from I kept meaning to ask him but it's one of those things where I think he brought a pie to Carol Carol yeah, yeah he, oh okay okay that's what yeah. I was, was it him though I think King Ezekiel yeah. made it and had him deliver it I think <laughs> it's what it was if I remember correct well they had tons of pie over the weekend so that's hilarious <laughs> great <Yeah>. idea <laughs> he was, I'm going to start serving pie in my <laughs> see I want to be like see I'm more like Gabriel Iglesias bring some cake, cake. I like cake <laughs> you know, yellow cake, mixed cake, chocolate cake, those are my favorites. Uh, not big on the strawberry or anything with fruit in the middle, but I like the chocolate and yellow <laughs> and that. So, But uh, he was really cool. That's cool. And then I uh, had another chance to talk to with uh, a young man, uh, played Troy on Stranger Things. Peyton Witch is his name. Mm -hmm. And he was there with his dad signing autographs all weekend. Uh, now, this is the kid, if you've seen Stranger Things, he plays the bully. Uh, and he's a. Uh, yeah, it's the key scene where he's got the knife. Now, Dustin. He, he's yeah. got the knife to Dustin's throat, and he's telling Will to jump off the cliff. Yeah. Or uh, And uh, then Eleven shows up and kicks some butt. Yeah, she kind of messed him up a couple times. And, yeah. and that, I mean, he played a good a good bully, but just the nicest kid there was. Right. Um, really awesome to talk to. We talked a little bit about where he's from. He's from New Orleans. Um, I'm really into that. We talked a little bit about Stranger Things. Uh, Were you able to find out if he gets any backlash for being the bad guy? You know, I really didn't get into that too okay. much. Um, but I know that, that does happen with actors a lot, where like even like the guy who played um, the jerk in Ghost, right? Like he said for years, like he had women actually walk up to him and slap him right. because of how he was <laughs> in the movie, and he's like, it was a character. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was really cool. He had a lot of young fans that were excited to see him, so he had his cool. fan base and that. That's very cool. And he looked like he was having a great time. I mean, he's right next to uh, uh, Cooper, so of course he was eating a lot of pie with him and <laughs> just having fun. So um, Jerry Cavalcon is uh, an absolute blast of a show. It is. Uh, I Rob does a great job. Rob, Michael Ackley, um, who run the shows, um, just fantastic. Uh, my buddy Corey up there, who is uh, uh, one of their right-hand mans who has a lot of volunteers, came around quite a bit to see how we're doing. The big thing for me on the show is I showed up to check in on Friday, and right away Corey sees me like, oh my God, I'm so excited you're here, you have no idea. Because I hadn't been there in three years. Right. And same thing with Rob, he told me that uh, the minute he saw my uh, paperwork come through, he was real excited I was coming back. And not being there has nothing to do with the show. Um, I love that show. I love going up there. The fans are great. Right. Um, it's it's a, what I call an intimate show. It gives me a chance to really spend time with the fans and, and really build those relationships up. But just being around those guys is an awesome time. Um, never enough time. It goes by way too fast. Well, that's also, you know, when you say intimate show, that's the type of show that, you know, for instance, Phoenix Comic Con. Yeah. If if you were at Phoenix Comic Con, you would have never had a chance to talk to uh, Cooper Cooper Andrews or um, Peyton Witch because the show is so huge. The right. celebrities aren't even allowed to interact um, or anything like that. Whereas a show like that, when it's small like that, everyone's more relaxed. Yeah, the atmosphere is a little calmer, and everyone it, you get those moments where there's that slow time in the show where you can go over and just say hi. So it's really nice uh, uh, in that regard. Yeah. And like you said, um, Cherry Capricorn is a show I wish I could do every year. Right. I know this ties into, and we'll cover it in a future episode about the oversaturation of Comic Con, where there's a, it, it's down to the point where, like this weekend, you, we had four or five big shows going on around the country. So as an artist, you want to hit them all, but you physically can't. Right. 
and Cherry is one of those ones where I, I usually do Phoenix, and they usually fall on the same weekend. Every once in a while, they fall on different weekends. I'm like, yes, I can make it to Cherry. So, you know, it, it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, I, I love the Cherry Capricorn. It's a great show every year. It's, it's, yeah, I will be back. I don't know if I'll be back next year, but I definitely will be back in the, in the next few years uh, just because I truly love being at that show. Oh, yeah. And the resort's really nice where they have it. And it is one of the, for the size of the show, it's one of the best run shows there is, and they really take good care of all of us. Sure. Um, do you want to give a quick shout-out, though, to uh, my buddy Travis Bramble? He did the design this year for the 501st Charity Patch. Uh, he did a really great BB-8. Um, nice. They sold out on Sunday. In fact, they made an announcement they only had five left, and he goes, oops, I'm sorry, they're gone, hmm. uh, which is awesome because there's been years where they don't sell out. Um, but his was fantastic. I made him sign the back of mine. He thought it was a little weird, but I wanted yeah. to sign. He goes, well, I hope we don't bleed through. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted that because it's cool. He's an excellent artist, and I'm glad to see him uh, doing some really great things. I uh, really enjoyed uh, talking with him and his wife, Dana, so I look forward to seeing them soon. Um, we're getting close to uh, the end of our show here as we're kind of wrapping up here. Um, in a future show, we're going to talk about Artist Alley as a whole. Uh, we've got a lot of topics on that, um, kind of how shows are going in terms of general, some of our thoughts on that. Uh, so definitely keep tuning in for that. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about uh, Wonder Woman. Um, we're going to talk, uh, kind of review that. We're also going to do a Facebook Live review tomorrow yeah, night afterwards around 10.30. Yeah, tomorrow night, both Brett and I are going to our sponsors, uh, Imagine Theaters, to, yep. to, give a, to check out Wonder Woman. We're going to be experimenting a little. Uh, we are going to do a live review of the movie when we get out, and we will be at two different locations. So we, we're, we're going to be attempting a split-screen live cast. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. <laughs> we're going to try it out today. Worst guys, case so. scenario, Brett will be by himself. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. And uh, But before we go, I want to give a, a final shout-out to Loringer Family Chiropractic, another one of our great sponsors, uh, located in Dexter, Michigan, as well as Belleville, Michigan. Um, Loringer Chiro Family Chiropractic, they take great pride in providing the finest chiropractic care to each and every patient. They offer massage therapy, orthotics by foot levelers, young living essential oils, aromatherapy, a full line of vitamins, and they do this all in a family-oriented environment. You can give them a call at 734-697-4244 or visit them at loringerfamilychiropractic.com. We have a link on oddmusings.com for you to go to. Um, as one of their patients, I can never talk highly enough about them. They're awesome. I was just there yesterday after a major migraine over the weekend, um, which slightly affected how I was feeling at the show, but I still did the best of it. She, uh, I got adjusted yesterday by Dr. Anna, and I feel 100% better than I did over the nice. weekend. So Perfect. definitely check them out. And the massagers are fantastic. They have some, some great people doing the massage therapy there. So definitely check into them if you're looking to work on your wellness and feel better. Scott, do you have any closing thoughts today? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've uh, covered a lot today. I want to thank you guys for joining us again live. It's great to be back. We'll be back next week live as well. We'll have a lot more to talk about. And until then, Dominic, play our outro.